All right, we're getting into the plumbing. So this is the stage that if it's over complicated, if it's over your head, if you're not sure exactly what codes you need to be uh, abiding by, it might not be a bad idea at this point to go ahead and hire a licensed plumber to be able to do this so that you make sure that you're within code and that you're getting everything done correctly. Uh, and if you've done all of this work, if you've torn up your, your basement and were able to get everything uncovered and maybe even remove that old plumbing, that is a really great start. You're gonna get a great price from a plumber. Any plumber is gonna to wanna to come in here at this point and be able to reroute things for you. If there's one thing I know, plumbers hate digging. So if you did all this work yourself, it's definitely worth at this point going out and getting a contractor if you're overwhelmed by what needs to be done. But in this bathroom, I'm just gonna be doing a very simple uh, layout where we're basically using one vent, one wet vent to basically vent this entire system. That's kind of a go-to for a lot of plumbers out there and we're gonna be following the UPC code. So let's get to it. Hold on a minute, I think I just... It cracked down at the bottom for some reason. So now I gotta get back further. All right, well, this is one thing about clay is that you can sometimes easily crack it. So, so I basically just cracked it down here somehow. I must've hit it with the hammer. So now this is the main reason why I went about making sure I have plenty of room here in case something like that happened. Now I can cut it back here and uh, basically reconnect it further back. But this is one reason you definitely wanna keep some room on here so that if something like that happens. So for connecting to clay, you wanna use a big fern co. This is a strong back. So you can see it has the metal shielding that goes over the PVC. And it, it basically has a bigger hub here to be able to connect to that clay. So same diameter pipe on the inside, just has a bigger uh, apparatus to go around the clay. So you just wanna make sure when you set this on here that you're getting fully onto the clay and it just takes a 5 16th inch nut driver to get this tight. So we're gonna dry fit everything first now that I had to cut that back, I want to make sure I'm in where exactly where I want to be. But you need to have a, some kind of a clean out so that you can be able to air test this or put water and fill up your whole system. So this is going to get buried under here, but this is just a means to be able to test my plumbing. So when you dry fit things, really try to push everything together so that you can be pretty accurate to what you're gonna be doing when you glue it. And when it comes to branching or making a horizontal bend, you always wanna use a Y fitting. So you can see how this comes out at a 45 degree angle. That is the proper slope so that if anything, anybody needed to snake anything, they can get that snake through there pretty easily. So always use Y fittings for horizontal bends. And if you needed to bend it over, you can always use another 45 to make a 90 degree elbow. So then coming to our shower, four inch by four inch by two inch coming off of a Y here. And this is gonna allow us to go over to our shower and our vanity. And then when you come up, into the wall, you wanna have a long sweep 90. So this is a bigger radius than a standard 90. Okay, so we have a center mark here. This is where we're gonna be bringing our waste stack up to connect to our upstairs bathroom. Come here over here for the vanity. This is gonna be our vanity down here. We'll connect that after we get the whole main stack. But right now, all I'm interested in doing is dry fitting my main waste stack. And then we'll configure that after everything's installed. And then this is our toilet. We're gonna go about 16 off the back. Make sure that we're 18. All right, we're gonna bring this guy here for our clean out. So this will come back here to connect for our clean out. We'll have clean out facing outside the bathroom. So in case anybody needed to snake anything. Going into our fitting about seven inches. 
Okay, so anytime you cut your plumbing, it's a really good idea to use a chop saw so you have some nice straight cuts. Okay, so that's basically our main trunk line. Now I already kind of dry fitted this earlier, so it's just a matter of making sure that everything's going quarter inch per foot. So make sure that everything's sloping, which it is. Now we can go ahead and about, go about gluing it. This is after shower. This is to the shower. This is a toilet. And then toilet. Don't be too rough on your plumbing. Now I gotta go get a different, I get a new Y. I will, I guess we'll never get this done. Okay, so let's just start putting this together. Basically we just need primer and glue for PVC. So always just use a level to make sure that this fitting is plumb, because if this is plumb, then you're going to have the correct slopage to your drain. Okay, so then when you come over to the shower, again, we're going to have a Y so that we'll be able to attach our vanity and our shower. So this is technically going to be the wet vent for our toilet. And again, if you make sure that this is level, then you'll have the proper slopage on here. So just make sure that that's plumb. Fifteen and three quarter, good enough. Should work. So eighteen is because we're gonna have a two by six wall back here and we wanna be twelve inches away from the studs. Vanity is about 51 inches off this back wall, according to our layout. Now, just a couple things about this is that you have to continue with your two inch, even though most vanities only need an inch and a half, but since this is gonna be a vent for the system, 
this needs to be two inch all the way up. And uh, this is a long radius 90, much more of a longer sweep. So that's what you wanna do there. And then for the shower, we're gonna Y off again, kind of bring backtrack this a little bit to our shower area. Now the shower is gonna be wet vented as well from this vanity along with the toilet being wet and vented through there. So you really just have to, you know, this, this would be considered the branch right here of the wet vent of the, both of these from the shower to the vanity. So you can go with two inch up to four fixture units. The shower is considered two, the vanity is considered one. So um, if, you were to get, if you were to do a double bowl sink, that's still gonna be one and one and two, so you'd still be at four. But if you had something else tied into this as well, you're gonna have to go with three inch coming off of here. But since we're just doing the shower, the vanity, and we're actually gonna be tying up the upstairs vanity into this as well. So we're gonna have four fixture units for this specific um, branch fitting here. Okay, so this is the edge of the wall, so 24 by 18. It's one, I'm one inch off. Tell you what, if you were to do a different type of shower pan, which, you know, I really wouldn't recommend anything other than doing a mud bed, just because you already have all this concrete busted out and there's no sense in getting a preformed base. Um, but I'm like 19 inches off of my edge of my wall. 20, I'm, I'm centered, I'm 24 this way. Uh, but I'd probably move that back over if you were gonna do some other type of system. But since I'm doing a mud bed and I'm doing pebble rock, like no one's gonna notice a difference an inch uh, off of center. So I'm just gonna stick with it. But just pay attention to what system you're actually gonna be installing. Uh, Cause some of them have to be pretty accurate, especially if you're doing like a shower pan, like a fiberglass base or something, you're definitely gonna have to be right on. Okay, so then when you bring a Y up like this, if you make this even with this basically cross section here, that'll make it completely perpendicular. And you put this together, make sure that there's things align. This will be our dry vent. So we have our fitting upside down and we want to keep it two inch because we're bringing a two inch because we have that wet vent. So it needs to be two inch 
Now this is for UPC code. You could go down an inch and a half on IPC. But for this, we're doing the two inch. And so upside down allows any water drainage to go down through my vent system. Okay. Toilet. I think it's about six and a half inches. That should still be all right for what we need here. All right, so we're gonna connect our tub drain and the best way to go about venting a tub drain is just to have a sanitary T straight up and down, just like your vanity and make sure that everything's solvent well, that'll make sure that you know, you're gonna be able to have a good sound installation. So we're gonna go ahead and install this first because we have an existing vent stack that's connecting to this main copper line in the bathroom. So we'll connect our drain with the P-trap first and then uh, connect everything else to the main waste stack. Tighten this slip fitting so that this stays together up here. Together. So we're just gonna connect this existing fern co. And this vent goes up to the main way stack. So now our tub's completely vented here. So it does get a little bit messy with the, the primer on some of these things sometimes, but to get the angle in there, it kind of makes it tough now. A lot of ways I could have connected all this together and then just then this one elbow here. Sense I made it a little bit easier, but either way, just as long as everything's glued and primed, you should be in good shape. All right, so when it comes to the vanity output, the adapter for your trap, you definitely wanna pay attention to the exact vanity that you're purchasing because a lot of times they're coming with shelves now and some of them, they can't be adjusted. So this is a Teak 24 inch vanity and the, uh, the shelf is intact. There is no moving it. So it's an important detail to know because you don't wanna to have to cut a big hole out of this to make the trap work. So, 
you know, looking at this particular model, we have less than 12 inch or 12 and a half inches from the top of my vanity to the shelf. So you're pretty much with an undermount sink, you're gonna have to have the trap come down below and, and basically cut a hole in this shelf for that main extension to go down into this. Because most of the time undermount sinks are about seven inches deep and then you have your drain assembly. And so by the time, you know, even if I put this straight on top of this shelf, I'm only eight inches. It's too, too, too close to chance. Like I said, I don't want to make some kind of ugly hole for this to, to attach to correctly. So my suggestion is, is just to make sure that, you know, your outlet to your vanity is going to work. We're going to go with 16 inches because then by the time we go and put this in, we'll be able to connect it. Now we're going to have a floor that we're going to, we don't really a hundred percent know the level at. I would pretty much think it's going to be about three quarters of an inch thicker than what we have for the concrete. So, uh, you know, really, I guess, technically off of the floor, we'd be about 15 and three quarter or 15 and a quarter or so, which would work out well. So just give yourself plenty of room so that when you adapt this, you don't have to do any adjustment or <laughs> cut into the wall and, and readapt. So we got our laser set where we want the actual adapter to come out of the wall. So that's really important to reference. Make sure you look at the vanity that you're using. Uh, otherwise, like this, you know, normally I recommend 21 inches off of your rough floor and 20 inches, which is usually what you end up with after the flooring. It, you know, that can vary depending on what kind of flooring you're actually doing. But usually 20, 21 inches works. In this particular case, that was going to be right directly in the middle of that shelf, which would have been a nightmare. So I'm glad we had the vanity ahead of time. But what we're going to be doing here is just continuing our vent, our two inch vent up, but we're going to be adapting down to inch and a half for our adapter. You don't need to have two inch coming out of the wall. So we'll bring that up. And the other thing that we're going to be tying into this same system is the other lav on the second floor. So we're going to bring that down below. We want to keep our vanity above the inlet of this. But again, we're going to be basically, this is going to be the wet vent for my toilet. So it needs to be two inch all the way through for that to work properly. And we're going to have a total of four uh, fixture units. So we're going to have one for the lav, two for the shower, and then one for the lav above. So two inch should be able to work for that. Six and a quarter, which should be all right. That should work. So that's about as tight as we can get to here so that we can encapsulate this wall. A lot of stuff going on here, but that should work right. Now we're just going to tie in our lab above. And I should mention that there's a vent for the lab upstairs. So this is not getting vented from the above deal. That's going to have its own separate vent. Okay, so this guy goes into our vanity up here. So we want to cut this off, get this in the joist. Again, I don't want to be having to fur down my ceiling. So I'm just going to take my oscillating tool and cut this off. It's a long sweep 90. Oh well, should cut that up higher. So I'm probably gonna have to fur down the ceiling in quarter, three quarters of an inch. And I got the slope here now, but I should have paid attention to that, brought this up a little bit higher, but 
whatever, it's not a big deal. And some of these things right here are kind of sticking down below here, like for, especially for this vent. So adding three quarters of an inch to the ceiling probably really isn't gonna be a big deal. But I'd rather, you know, obviously make sure the plumbing is sitting well. Okay, then. One thing about ABS cement is you don't get quite as much time as you do with the PVC. You know, you've got like half the amount of time before this is really set well. And uh, so you kind of have to be quick. You know, it's not as forgiving, I should say, I guess. But it's definitely a way to go. I definitely still like ABS a lot. Let's get that glued first. Okay, so when you connect two ABS and PVC, they do make a green cement that can do the transition. Uh, but a lot of places don't like that for some reason. So the next best thing is just to use a male and a female adapter, just connect them together and uh, that should work. So I'd recommend putting a little bit of Teflon tape and pipe sealant on this connection. Let's go ahead and glue this into our ABS. All right, so that wraps up our plumbing job here. We got everything roughed in. The next step is just to actually test everything, fill this entirely up with water, make sure you don't have any leaks. But just let's go over a real quick recap of what we did here uh, so that you can basically know what's going on and maybe it might help you out with your own particular bathroom project. So first off, uh, we started out with clay. So this is an old home, 1940s, 50s and they used to use clay terracotta piping. We connected that with a fern coat, a shielded strong back fern coat. We used a test tee so that we can actually test this. So we'll be taking this out and uh, basically putting this test tee in so that we can test the system and fill everything up with water. You really wanna test everything that you just did make sure that before you bury everything that everything's good. So we'll be screwing this in there and filling up with air and let that sit overnight. Then to come to our existing waste stack, we had a, a bathroom above so that we had to reconnect everything. We used a Y fitting. It's always important to use on horizontal connections. Always use a Y so that you can 45 or make a, a long sweep 90 when you need to make a turn. Now, if you didn't have your main waste stack here like I do here, this could be just the toilet right here coming down or however, which wherever you want to locate your toilet and just use a two inch vent for uh, your vanity. So basically just one vent to your vanity, two inch going all the way through and connecting to the roof or going through the roof. Uh, but you're able to basically ventilate everything in a basement bathroom with just one single vent. This is considered a wet vent because you have the shower coming into this and then you have your vanity. Now I do have another additional item, a lavatory on the second floor attached to that. So we have four fixtures for this two inch wet vent that will be technically venting the toilet, but I also really have a second vent for the toilet, which is this main waste stack coming up. So this is a vent 
going through the roof. So we, as before, it was down below the joist, so we reconnected it. So we have copper three inch line that goes all the way through the roof. So this is a complete vent. Um, now, one thing to note is that I have a dry vent. Everything above this level where the tub is connected is dry. So we have our two inch vent for our vanity and shower connected to this. That's important to make sure that's all dry above the vanity level. And then we have our tub connected here. And this just came out to be a pretty, really nice setup where you have a sanitary tee to your elbow or to your trap. And then there's another inch and a half vent that connects to the main weight vent stack in that bathroom. And then we came over and here's our toilet location, basically just making sure that we're within minimum. So we're about 16 inches off of the, the side wall here that we're gonna be framing and then about 18 inches off the back wall gives us 12 inches off the rough end framing. And then we wanted to make sure we have a clean out. I didn't wanna put the clean out inside of the bathroom because that was gonna be problematic if anybody actually needed the snake it's a pretty confined space. So they'll be able to access a snake through here and clean out the system. So very simple, straightforward. And if you were able to just find a, a floor drain, find your big stack, you could do all of this without having to tie in and redo your upstairs bathroom. It just happened to be that we wanted to refinangle that anyways. It was already going bad going into the connection. So replacing all the plumbing made a lot of sense. But a lot of times when you're doing basement bathrooms, you don't have to go to this extent. You know, maybe choose a location where you can just tie into the main and not have to do all this. But you still have to get a vent, you know, going through the roof technically. Uh, to make everything function well. So hopefully those tips helped you out. Please give me a like on this video. It really helps out the algorithm and gets us out to more people. Um, you know, I put a lot of effort in all these videos, so I'm really hoping it helps you out. If you have any comments, questions, leave them down below. Thanks so much.